What is Inkbound? Well, it's a new game from the creators of Monster Train. They're stepping into a turn-based roguelike where players play storybook-style characters in real-time travel, turn-based battle. It's a roguelike strategy game that can be played alone or with up to four friends. But let's be honest here, there's a lot of storybooks that aren't worth reading and a lot of games that aren't worth playing. For every XCOM, there's a Grotesque Tactics 2, Dungeons and Donuts. And if you didn't know that was a real game, sorry, that information's now inside your brain and will never leave. Just like the memory of realizing that game got made when throwing the money into a pit in your backyard would have a higher chance of something being made that was worthwhile. That should remind you of just how easy a game can turn bad. But the Monster Train devs, their last game was excellent. They sort of know what they're doing, so at the very least, we have a bit of history to go on. Their next game is out May 22nd, and this is my hands-on with it. And if you want to get hands-on, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. When this game comes out, we'll give a couple codes to some people in the comments section, and we'll just see if this one's good. In Inkbound, players fight for their own stories by leaping into the books in a magical library, exploring the pages during battles, and hopefully returning home alive, or at the very least with some hard-earned ideas for what they need to do next time. Just just like real libraries, this magical library in Inkbound contains all the stories ever written. Each book becomes a portal to another world where you and some friends can leap in. You play as a needless, and if that doesn't explain right there what kind of game this is, nothing probably will. A faceless and formless character from the void who gets to leap in and choose a class or aspect that they want to be. Like Pinocchio, you just want to be a real boy, or in this game's case, someone useful. And when not hanging out at your base, furthering the story, switching out classes, and meeting new people, you move through segmented sections each a very small local walking area with a couple things to break or collect and then you have a three choice branch for where you want to go to continue. Sometimes battles which will tell you the location and level of the fight. Other times you're going to travel to a spiritual center to upgrade a skill. Other times you may travel to small merchant camps to heal and possibly buy an extra upgrade or two that will be useful in the next battle. Aspects are the name of the game and they are the game's classes. Like Moss Cloak who has you throwing shurikens and dashing into enemies. Each time you defeat a group you get a small set of drops that you can get to pick from and upgrade your current skills or get an item. It may raise the stacks of poison on the ninja stars. It may give you shields if you dash through enemies. Each time it's different, which means even in two runs, one after the other with the same character, your strategy could drastically change. From the heavy use of the ninja star and poison stacks to perhaps adding shields on shields on shields by dashing through enemies like Colossus. Grabbing items in the world also at different times might gain you an item like a necklace that hurts enemies when they hit you or the chance to randomly critical hit a bad guy. There are tons of upgrades, and of course, switching to a different aspect like the Weaver, who's a magic user, has a giant thread spool on their back and spends their time in battle creating webs of fiery thread and fights off enemies until they can light it all on fire like an arsonist with a sewing addiction. And these different attacks can be like a character's magical spells or smashing someone with a hammer, slicing through the guts of a group of enemies, and then rushing off to a safe place, which has to do with the location in battle. As you enter into battle, some locations will have environmental hazards and others won't, but the main story and game proper all based on turns and cooldowns with skills taking more time to cool down or adding some perk to another skill and items that you have collected doing the same thing but in a passive way you have a lot of builds that you're looking at and at any one time you may have items that you have that are affecting your skills and skills that are building on other skills in your hand there's a similarity in style of movement as well with midnight suns it is turn based on a magical flexible grid that really is still a grid even if you can't see it it does a good job visually enticing players with something that feels more flexible it's still drawn out in a very particular way it's just not being able to see that grid makes everything feel a little bit more organic the game makes it clear that when you're going to attack somebody how much damage is going to be done to you how much will you accrue letting you mix and match movement and mayhem taking that awful choice between something that's worthy of your time even though it means maybe you can't run away to a place where you want to not get hit completely and in a group this becomes wild as everyone is testing out where they can move trying to split up groups and combo attacks and enemies. And luckily, the information, the HUD, the UI itself is pretty good. There are some spots, especially when you look at the lower left on the taskbar, there are a lot of different things that you end up collecting that can affect your character or affect the enemies. And that can cause a little bit of time as you look to see how many stacks you have of something. But overall, it's pretty easy to read and understand sort of what's going on. And this is also done just with the graphics themselves. It forcibly reminds you sometimes of the unique art styles we've seen in, say, Bastion or Pyre, though not with that otherworldly slant those games have. Instead, here it's worlds where ink everything is sort of secreted in it has that super saturated blotted appearance to all of it ink leaking across the battle board shrinking available space or staining the 
faces and clothing of the characters that you meet. It reminds you at times a little bit of something like Mickey Mouse and Fantasia. Inkwells are dimensional doors into these worlds, leading you through the pages of the books and against different insane looking creatures as well, from massive sonic spellcasting birds to huge giants trying to turn the small enemies they see into smaller bits. Well, this is a preview is missing some voices and a couple animations here and there, but overall I like the general look of the game and it actually performed incredibly well regardless of what was going on on screen. Now, despite my initial trepidation towards the game itself, Inkwell plays very well and I wasn't quite sure if it would. Each different run that you do also has different upgrades that will make the character feel different and attuning some skills, adding more and more perks to them can make even the most basic attack incredibly powerful and suddenly you're throwing a ninja star that whips through a ton of enemies poisons them as it does and may have buffed critical hit chances as well while the next time it's a basic ninja star but you've buffed up your ability to dash around the area and that adds a ninja star to an area of attack later with each enemy that you hit or pass through it adding a plus one to the ninja stars in your next throw the game does have a lot of the tropish stuff. What I mean by that? Well, you got critical and power and shields and burning and ice and dazing. All of the collectible and collective tropes that we get in a game like this. Stacks on stacks on stacks. Each game of this kind has its own feel, its own texture, and like any recipe can make or break it and its acceptance of those taking it in, depending on how it all comes together. Where some games are ruthlessly hard and bend over chance like a pulp action character, others play it safe with tons of spendables and expendable points. Some give the characters incredible power, but they face off against an almost limitless number of drone-like enemies with all the uniqueness of a DMV number in the middle of the day. Inkbound does it by telling everyone exactly what is going to happen at all times. If they make this choice, they're going to be hit by the enemy for this many points, and then making the battles themselves unknown until you actually get to them and adding randomness to the small locations between. While I got wiped a couple times, I returned to those battles later, even with a character built pretty much the exact same way, but using smart movement and range, I was able to work through to the boss multiple times and to multiple different bosses and get through those three engagements and take them out and then return home. If you're looking for a game that has that one more play kind of feel to it, Inkbound does. That could also be a huge detriment to this game though. First, Group play, it feels fast. Secondly, there's a responsiveness that is really noticeable in the game. I like the way all the animations worked, but there was a repetitiveness that does crop up a little bit. For example, every single thing in the game is done in threes. We've seen that before, but even here in the locations, when you're moving between spot to spot to spot, it feels like it's done in threes. A lot of times there's two or three items that you can smash between locations, three upgradable choices whenever you pull cards, three location choices, three usually battle choices, and three things to buy. And while I love the art style, the game has a lot of cosmetic microtransactions already. It's got a season pass and also its own in-game currency you can buy with real money. So the big question will be, will that impact the gameplay mechanics? And I haven't seen that so far, but it's easy to see that your character is just that basic bitch poor waif with a ninja star when someone else pops in who has a season pass and is rolling all sorts of cool cosmetic gear. It also has made the choice to be online at all times. Yes, that means single player as well. Because this is a cosmetic game, it is going to be just attached to the internet at the hip. And that to me is one of the very worrisome problems that we've seen in a lot of games, not just Inkbound, that I think will hurt a lot of titles moving forward unless they have a very, very real reason to be here. Now, a lot of the reasons that developers will give will be things like cheating, things like unlocks that shouldn't happen and making it fair for everybody. The only problem is it's really fair for nobody if you can't log in and play it. We see other games like this that are online and don't see a lot of the same complaints, but those games usually end up having a massive amount of offering. We'll just have to see how Inkbound does, because I do like a great deal of the combat there. Some of the classes feel a bit unbalanced, but in a game like this, that will pop up from time to time, especially depending on what random drops you get. My time with Inkbound was extraordinarily insightful insightful in a way where I got to see how one company would do this versus some other companies where I just don't like their stuff, where this game just felt better and more fluid when it comes to its movement than Midnight Suns ever did. I like the idea of multiple people going in. Another thing that a lot of strategy games like this don't necessarily have. However, it is just one of those titles that until we see it and it goes into early access, we'll never quite know exactly what the support's going to be like. There's a lot going against this game, a lot of difficulty there that it is facing down. I certainly question a couple of those decisions, even up front right now. 
So anyway, that's it for my hands-on preview. I liked what I saw this game, but it does have some caveats there that are quite noisy in the background when it comes to my idea of what this game will see when it comes to success six months down the road or a year down the road. If you get a chance, subscribe. Check out the patron. We have amazing stuff, D&D games, people streaming games all the time, questions of the day, discussions inside baseball when it comes to reviewing and games that are being covered, or just check out the patron if you want some cool merch and check out some excellent videos from me coming later this week. Peace out.